Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. Sorry there haven't been any videos this week. I'm still trying to get over cold. I got a little bit of congestion up here. My throat's kind of bothering me, um, but all that's starting to go away, so if I sound a little funny, that's why. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, if you look down below the video, you'll see a brand new join button. Um, YouTube approved me for adding members now, so if you want to support the channel for $4.99 a month, you click on that. You get some generic uh, icons or whatever you can use when we do our live streams or whatever, but that's really the only difference. That and you're going to get two extra videos a uh, a month, no a week, sorry, two extra videos a week that you normally wouldn't get here. So you'll still be getting movie reviews, book reviews, all the stuff that you normally get, all the stuff um, that the members are getting, is completely new content, um, stuff that I actually need the income to be able to provide for the channel and the community. So, <clears throat> but nothing is changing as far as if you like Edward Lauren channel at the way it is right now, nothing is changing whatsoever. So jumping in at number five on this list, uh, we're, we're going to do sorry, we're going to do the top five tropes. Uh, trope isn't really the proper word here. I was looking it up on Wikipedia. Trope is like a metaphor for something, um, a piece of dialogue or something, or writing that's a metaphor for something. Um, trope has become in the internet landscape of today. It has become like you know a storytelling device kind of deal, and Wikipedia does go over that also, but. I'm going to label the video Top 5 Tropes, even though trope isn't the right thing, just because it sounds better than Top 5 Story Devices. Alright, the first thing is bad people getting their comeuppance. Um, anytime that there's a group of bad people, like I love reading about thieves, murderers, criminals, uh, serial killers, from their point of view. I like getting in their head, whether it be first person or, th or close third person, I really like getting, uh, I really like deep dives into a character that isn't the best. Um, I'm super tired of reading about nice people or people who do the right thing. I, there's literally been hundreds of years of content for those type of people and it's only been within probably the past, I don't know, maybe 50 years there's been a rise in uh, stories about bad people, just about bad people. I remember one of the, uh, one of the first movies I watched that was in this theme was uh, Mel Gibson's Payback. Uh, where he was a criminal and he was getting back at other cr worse criminals. Um, I don't think he got what he deserved in the end, um, but I do like the st the stories where, you know, it's bad people against bad people, um, and there's there's no real moral right or wrong area. It's all gray area. I really love those stories. Next up is anything coming of age. I like uh, reading about kids who find out that the world is not perfect. Um, I love reading about kids who, that moment where they find out that they're not invincible, that they might, that might, that we're all going to die one day, that uh, coming of age, not the coming of age like sex, um, you know, where, you know, the puberty, whatnot. Of course, that usually comes hand in hand. But there's a whole like subgenre like on Amazon that's coming of age that's just new not new adult but like YA mixed with new adult it's like YA with sex very very weird um, but I think the characters are over 18 so it makes it okay that kind of thing I'm not sure where that where that gray area is but uh, I'm talking about things like Stephen King's It um, Richard McCammon's Boy's Life um, even Mystery Walk by McCammon. Uh, Summer of Night by Dan Simmons, and it doesn't have to be horror. Chad Lutsky, well, people call Chad Lutsky a horror author, but um, he writes really good dramas with, about coming of age, and it's usually about, you know, it's a very weird circumstance. Uh, Foster Homes and Flies, uh, Skull Face Boy, both of those are terrific coming of age books. Uh, next up is any kind of fictionalized documentary. I like taking like a real subject and giving it some kind of twist, uh, especially like Dan Simmons' The Terror. Uh, and that'll come into my number one also, but uh, Dan Simmons the Terror takes a real life expedition and fictionalizes it. Uh, Kia Wilson's We Eat Our Own is back there behind Pennywise. That was a fictionalized version of the filming of Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> Excuse me. Actually, it might not have been Cannibal Holocaust. It might have been. I can't remember exactly what hers is about. Um, it, I don't. I don't think it was Cannibal Holocaust. It might have been. I just, just don't remember. So let me know down there in the doobly-doo whether or not I'm right or wrong. Um, but anytime you take a real situation and you put a, like either a supernatural spin on it 
or you change something to help the fiction um, to make it more interesting, you're adding some kind of element, I really dig that. What I don't like is like alternate histories like uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Uh, I mainly don't like that one because of the vampires, but that's not what I'm talking about. There, there has to be some some real things going on, um, like uh, 11 63 is another one. Had there not been that huge chunk of romance right in the middle, I would have loved that book. Alright, next up, at number two, we have Grief. My favorite authors, as far as grief is concerned, is Keelan Patrick Burke and Stephen King. They both do grief so tremendously well. Um, they also build dread, and there's a lot to be said about dread and grief and how those two things are, you know, are so close together. Um, because I, grief builds dread, and dread can build, you know, grief. Um, it's that, it's that idea that something is coming, or that something has already happened, and you expect that to happen to everyone you love. Um, it's that, it's that kind of thing. So dread and grief really, if, if I were doing, like, uh, top emotions, then I would add dread in there also, but, gref but grief, if someone has died in the story and someone is mourning them, I am showing up for that. And finally, number one is cold weather. Whether they be out at sea, whether they be up in the mountains, whether they be in Maine, or whatever it is, anything with cold weather, I love. Um, the only thing that I've ever read that was based in the snow or the cold weather is uh, that I didn't enjoy um, was Dreamcatcher, oddly enough. Uh, I enjoyed most of the stuff that happened in the cold weather, and it's once the, uh, the uh, it's once a certain character dies and the military comes in that I, that I stop enjoying the book. Um, but Dan Simmons, The Terror, uh, The Abominable is another one I didn't like, but only because he really got bogged down into the uh, minutia of rock climbing or mountain climbing and it bored the mess out of me and just about everybody who read it. It was interesting for a while, and everything that happens on the mountain, any of the stuff that happens there was really interesting, really fun to read about. Um, but it wasn't anywhere near as good as The Terror. Um, another one that I read that was in the cold weather, I think, uh, The North Water by Ian McGuire. Is that it? Yeah, Ian McGuire was really good. Just about anything in the cold weather, as long as it sticks to the cold weather. I use a Bone White by Ronald Malfi is another one that is just absolutely fantastic. But those are my picks for top five tropes or slash story devices. If you have a list, let me know down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!